as you rightly say, we've been interested in, uh, in microparticles or microvesicles as they're called nowadays um, because for the, for the role that they've for many years been uh, implicated in regulating inflammation. And different cells produce different flavors of microvesicles. And one thing that we found is that uh, the flavor, if you will, what, what the biology of these microvesicles is, will depend on the stimulus that the cell sees. So if the st cell sees a resolving stimulus, a, a stimulus that is towards limiting inflammation, the vesicles that are produced will have protective actions. Whereas if the same cell sees an inflammatory signal, that is more likely to produce a propagation. And this reflects on what gets packaged into the vesicles. So uh, as the cell is processing the signals from outside, it decides, if you will, what it's going to go into the vesicles. And we have different proteins, and we've described some of these proteins that are involved in, in the signaling of cells. Uh, we, we've described, for example, NXNA1, which is one of the pro-resolving proteins, alpha-2 microglobulin, which is critical for activating the immune response during infections. There are several studies that show that microRNAs are packaged into these microvesicles and actually several authors have also used these microvesicles as a delivery system for microRNAs. And we've also shown that there are precursors that are getting incorporated for the production of pro-resolving mediators, as well as enzymes. So some of the biosynthetic enzymes get packaged into the microvesicles and the microvesicles can transfer these enzymes into a recipient cell that can make the molecules that it couldn't before because it doesn't normally express these enzymes. So these microvesicles have an important biology. Um, I think we still need to learn a little bit more about what they are in order to be able to use them as a diagnostic um, as well as to use them as a drug delivery system, but they definitely hold a lot of potential. So the biology of the prosoving mediators needs to be taken in sort of two different sections, if you will. One is the, the, the endogenous biology, what these molecules are doing in the body at a specific point in time, in a specific tissue. And those roles are very organ-specific, tissue-specific, and stimulus-specific. So depending on the injury, each mediator is produced at a different time and has a different biology because of the target cells that would be present in that organ at that specific time because of the expression of receptors. Receptors are very important for the biology of these mediators. Without them, there's no signaling to the cell. Um, so, so the endogenous biology is going to be very tissue-specific, very time-specific, and very injury-specific. On the other hand, the pharmacology is a little bit different. And this is because the receptors for these mediators are expressed throughout the body on many different cell types. So if we had to give resolving, for example, systemically, we won't only affect the cell and the, org the organ that's inflamed, but everything else that, that the mediator will come in contact with. The other thing that, we've, that we know is that the mediators themselves activate a cascade. So when you give a pro-resolving mediator at a specific point in time, what happens is it feeds forward to upregulate the endogenous production of other pro-resolving mediators in a tissue-specific manner. So you really set up a cascade, and so you don't need to constantly redose. This is a, a very different paradigm to what we have with anti-inflammatories, where you need the drug to be present to have a biological activity. Here, we set up a cascade, and this cascade feeds forward. So we don't need to keep dosing. At least in an animal systems, what we see is sometimes one, maybe two doses are enough to regulate an inflammatory response, even up to weeks later. So there are many sources of these essential fatty acids, and they, they do feed in, in, into the pathways, into these pro-resolving pathways. Uh, the reason being that uh, the uh, precursors are found in fish oils, for example, and, and other sources of omega-3, um, and they, these precursors are important in biosynthesis for, for the mediators. What we need to still understand a little bit more is how different precursors, because in, especially in supplements, you have different forms of these precursors, some in triglyceride form, some in ethyl ester form, some in metal ester form. So how 
how available do these type, do these different forms become to the convert to converge into these protective pathways? And this is something that we still need to learn a little bit more about. Also, <clears throat> in in some sources, we find not only the essential fatty acids, but we see an enrichment in the first step, if you will, of the biosynthesis for these pro-resolving mediators, and in conditions where those uh, that, that step is missing, this becomes a really useful way of obtaining, from, from a nutritional point of view, obtaining these precursors to help the body jumpstart resolution. Because if the enzyme is defi defective, we can then supplement for that step and circumvent this defect to get into resolution. So this is how nutrition can help. Um, but this will become a personalized approach too because different people will have different requirements and so by identifying what the requirements are we can actually help target a, thera a therapy with a nutritional source to that patient. At least in the little, small number of patients that we've looked at, there is, a, there is a blanket reduction in the production of these molecules because of increase in an inhibitor, endogenous inhibitor to the pathway. There are other, one of the, one of the uh, things that fell out of the original GWA studies that were done in Iceland was that 5-lipoxygenase, which is the same enzyme that we see defective, is a predictor of cardiovascular disease outcome, negative cardiovascular disease outcome. So, so this has already been in the literature for some time. Um, it was just that the mechanisms were not appreciated. And I think we'll start to appreciate these, these nuances in the mechanisms as the studies progress.